good morning dear friends at various centers and uh, in this particular hall now as announced by dr uh, bedi this session uh, is on sampling techniques friends while working as a teacher in the classroom or in the laboratory likewise working under the leadership of hod or the principal in a college an engineer working in industry or a business might have encountered number of problems where a sample is taken from a large population and the sample is analyzed or the results are obtained regardless of how careful you are in selecting or using the right sampling technique the sample likely will not have a perfect reflection of the population so that is why we are more interested in knowing why sampling is needed how sampling is carried out and what should be an optimal sample size so this session uh, is about sampling techniques now before we move to sampling techniques let us have a look at some of the uh, key terms used uh, in the sampling technique one is the sampling frame sampling frame is the target population one wishes to research for example the topic is to study the attitude of technical teachers toward teaching profession then we will say that sampling frame will be all teachers technical teachers working in engineering colleges polytechnics irrespective of their gender irrespective of their qualification irrespective of their say the stream of teaching all technical teacher will constitute or will fall under sampling frame the second one is the population which refers to the defined groups or aggregate of people it could be animal objects material measurements things the population can be finite it can be infinite for example when i say to study the attitude of technical teachers towards teaching profession or i uh, in in the state of punjab then it be finite okay all technical teachers working in engineering colleges and polytechnics will constitute the population okay when i say attitude of technical teachers toward teaching profession it means the the target population is infinite all the teachers maybe teachers working in other countries also this the data is unlimited so finite okay students enrolled for example in a given classroom college or student uh, district in a particular year so students in the nation asian countries or world so that is the infinite another we uh, call uh, another term is the census it is uh, uh, i would say similar to population so all the respondents in the sample frame participating in the research will constitute the sample census now coming to sampling sample uh, uh, sample the concept of sample any subgroup which is drawn by some appropriate method from a population you can have a look at this uh, picture population is whole and we are drawing a small sample representing the population why i say representing a uh, uh, representative because each member has an equal probability of being selected in the sample okay that is why we say sample so it is representative it can be probability sampling or a non random that is arbitrary selection of sample on the basis of some parameter or purposive for example say i want to or uh, draw a sample of 100 students out of 200 students studying one particular subject then i employ one a uh, random uh, i would say the simple random sampling technique through a lottery method i will draw a sample of 100 students so each student has an equal probability of being selected in the group 
now in case of uh, arbitrary selection i would say now roll number 1 to 50 or roll number 1 to 100 please come to me and i want to conduct a study so that is arbitrary method maybe in that particular uh, sample all the students are very good or maybe all the students are average or maybe all the students are mediocre so that will not give us the right result a sample is a smaller hopefully representative it should be representative only then you can say with confidence that the results are genuine after the uh, research is completed so it is a smaller collection of units from a population used to determine truths about that particular population okay so that is why it is representative so this is uh, given by field sample method that is the technique used to select the sample that is the sample method there are a number of sampling uh, methods by which we can uh, choose a small sample representing the uh, representing the uh, the whole population uh, that depends upon the purpose that depends upon the resources you have got that depends upon the time you have got so we choose different uh, you can say sampling techniques now coming to sampling again it involves selecting a relatively small number of elements from a large defined group that is first of all you have to define the group for example i when i say study the attitude of technical teachers towards teaching profession now you have to first of all define the target population i will say all the technical teachers teaching in engineering colleges polytechnics irrespective of their gender irrespective of their uh, qualification stream of teaching will constitute the population now from that population we draw a small sample why because we are not able to collect information from each and every member of the population that is why we employ sampling technique so and expecting the information gathered from the small group will enable judgments about the larger group why sampling is carried out purpose is to get the information about the large population so it is very economical less cost why because it makes possible a study of large population so you can collect the information very uh, in, in 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 less time so that is why less field time speed is more you can collect uh, in less time because uh, so uh, you want to collect information from each member of the population you have to go to each and every member it takes time it takes effort it takes money now you draw a small sample you can go personally to that pers um, sample element or you can send the questionnaire or you can say tool by post to that member so and more accurate why because uh, it can do a better job of data collection it is uh, when it is impossible to study the whole population that is why we employ sampling and it saves it saves the sources of data from being all consumed okay say number of studies have been conducted from a population population is very large okay one person uh, one researcher has taken a sample from two engineering colleges there are large number of engineering colleges in the state so the data is huge now what are the disadvantages of sampling disadvantage is that the research will not provide valid and reliable conclusions if the sampling is biased or not representative or the sample size is very very small then it will not give a true picture about the population so the, uh, the, then in that case uh, it has got limitation in the research the respondents who study must have a common characteristics which is the basis of the study and it's not possible due to sampling we assume that the the uh, the characteristics are common but there are number of parameters factors which may affect or which may influence the findings of your research paper sampling procedure becomes very complicated when the population is very large because uh, say when i say 
study the attitude of technical teachers towards teaching profession okay now technical teachers can be broken down into different subsections on the basis of gender on the basis of qualification that is postgraduate teacher graduate teachers phd holder then years of teaching experience okay then subjects they are teaching like that so you have to uh, take the representative sample from each strata okay these are the stratas okay so sampling becomes very complicated and it is difficult if the researcher doesn't know the sampling procedure and the technical know how and that is if you have not properly employed the uh, that, that particular sampling technique so as a teacher you need to know the steps involved in the drawing of a small sample using a particular sampling technique now defining which individuals objects or methods are to be included in population depends upon the generalizations the researcher wishes to make in the hypothesis or his objectives so the steps involved in selecting a sample is that define the population select a sample eliminate the population parameter from the knowledge obtained from the sample statistics and uh, the parameter is nothing but a property which is the characteristic or descriptive of the entire population and whereas the statistics is the corresponding characteristics of the sample okay so these two terms will be used uh, again and again so parameter is the property which is descriptive or characteristics of the entire population and statistic is the corresponding property or description of the sample now what should be the characteristics of ideal sample design ideal sample design must produce the representative sample when i say representative means every member or element of the population has an equal probability of being selected in the sample so it must produce representative sam sample secondly it must be uh, such which result in sampling error less sampling error there should not be much sampling error then it must be feasible in the context of available funds for the research study another is that it should have results to be applied to the whole population it can only be applied when the data when the sample is representative okay another is that it should be able to prevent the systematic bias we have to be unbiased the sampling has to be probable okay and it must provide valid result and validity depends upon two important dimensions one is the accuracy the data must be accurate and correct precision okay so these are the sampling terms the population elements are the people products okay defined target is the population then sampling unit available elements in the are uh, defined and then the sampling frame okay so these are the terms now coming to biased that is non probability sampling method and unbiased that is probability sampling method now some questions come to our mind which student should be used could students who volunteer for testing be used would it be reasonable to select a few average students to be tested now you have to see you have to see what are your objectives how much time is available how much funds are available okay how quickly you want to get the result so you can select the sample now bias sample or non probability sample relies on the researcher selecting the respondent for example now we have a class of 50 students i want to break uh, divide this class into two groups because i want to teach one group with the computer assisted instruction and the other group by say lecture method so what i can do is 
i can say yes you 25 students they go to one room and these 25 students will go to another room this is uh, you see biased maybe in one group the students are more intelligent then we cannot confidently say that the student who, uh, who are very bright in the beginning and we have taught uh, them with the help of cai package then we cannot confidently say that the students are getting good grades because of the new method of teaching we cannot say confidently because we have not taken the sample uh, we have not taken the probability sample they are considered to be interpretivist subjective non scientific qualitative unrepresentative so purposive sampling or quota sampling when a teacher is going to solve his immediate classroom problem when a teacher develops an instructional process to improve learning strategy of students in a classroom for example i have noticed that students are not taking interest in my class then i use two or three strategies to gain their attention or to create their interest i will implement one strategy see the result then i will implement the second strategy see the result i will compare all the results and find out which one is the best method of gaining their attention or creating their interest now i have found the solution but the solution may or may not be applicable to the same problem arising in another classroom because in other classroom the student uh, characteristics are different okay because i have not taken i have not uh, taken the representative sample i have conducted the research only in partic in particular section only so purpose sampling or quota sampling when a teacher is going to solve his immediate classroom problem that is the students are drawing ability is poor or they are not giving attention or when a teacher develops an instructional process to improve the learning strategy of students in a classroom an unbiased sample or probability sample these offer each respondent an equal probability or chance at being included in the sample so there are a number of techniques you can use the lottery method you can use uh, say uh, the randomized uh, table method or you can employ systematic uh, um, uh, random sampling techniques stratified random sampling techniques there are a number of so they are considered to be objective rather than subjective empirical scientific quantitative and representative so simple random sampling systematic random sampling stratified random sampling area or cluster random sampling quota random sampling multi stage random sampling so we will take all these one by one so what are the steps involved in these uh, sampling what are the advantages disadvantages now friends aim of any sample is to represent the characteristics of the sample frame we know the term sampling frame and a number of different methods are used to generate a sample and as a researcher you need to select the most appropriate method that meets the requirement of your objective or your research you have to see which sampling technique would be most suitable keeping in view the nature of your objectives or the purpose of your research problem now very simple is the simple random sampling this involves selecting any body from the sample frame entirely at random lottery method simple okay for example conducting a survey to estimate students attitude toward digitization of records with a sample drawn from the total number of students with each student having the same chance of being selected and this is only through lottery second is systematic random sampling it is again similar to a uh, simple random sampling but there is small difference 
rather than using random table or a computer to select respondent researchers select them in a systematic way he says that he selects every fifth or tenth name on the list of students in alphabetical order for inclusion in a sample for example you want to select a sample of 50 students out of 500 students you prepare a list of 500 students and write them in alphabetical order close your eyes and uh, say uh, select one particular uh, candidate then from that onward you can select any fifth any seventh any tenth candidate that is a systematic random sampling another is stratified random sampling example is that a director of the institute is instruct, interested in finding the opinions of students regarding digitization of records now you have information regarding the male female they have got different age groups socioeconomic status is different or some other variables you can think of so population because population is students who are teaching digitization of records who are being taught digitization of records all students okay so population is divided into two or more groups called strata according to some criteria such as the geographic lo location maybe punjab haryana maybe in a punjab dwaba region malwa region okay or different districts grade level age or income level of their parents or sub samples are randomly selected from each strata representing all these stratas the steps followed are define the population first determine the desired sample size how much how many students you require identify variables that is the stratas maybe gender maybe socioeconomic status maybe culture for which you want to guarantee appropriate representation either you can go for proportional or you can go for equal so classify all members of the population as members of one of the identified strata then randomly select using table of random numbers and appropriate number of individuals from subgroups example i am taking the researcher knows that there are approximately 10000 persons living in delhi city who have elementary education attainment 8000 have secondary education attainment and 6000 have college education attainment yeah. now if the desired sample size is 500 now how we can calculate the number of members selected from each subgroup now solution is that population in each strata elementary education secondary education college education so 10000 8000 6000 and total is 24000 now proportion of number of strata in each case now 10000 divided by 24000 so proportion is 0.42 likewise for the secondary education and uh, college ed education you can find out the proportion now you must remember that some of these proportion must be equal to one okay now number of members selected from each strata what you can do is because you want 500 students in all so 500 multiplied by the proportion so 210 then for the secondary education 165 for the college education which is 120 now 500 so the 500 sample is representing representing the different stratas now from these stratas you can select say 210 students out of uh, 10,000 you can select them using 
सिंपल रैंडम सैम्पलिंग टेक्निक और यूजिंग सिस्टमेटिक रैंडम सैम्पलिंग टेक्निक लाइक वाइज वन सिक्सटी फाइव स्टूडेंट कैन बी सिलेक्टेड आउट ऑफ एट थाउजेंड यूजिंग सिंपल रैंडम सैम्पलिंग टेक्निक दैट इज द लॉटरी मैथड और द रैंडम टेबल और सिस्टमेटिक रैंडम सैम्पलिंग एंड कॉलेज एजुकेशन लाइक दिस सो दिस इज हाउ यू कैन फाइंड यू कैन ड्रॉ ए सैम्पल ऑफ फाइव हंड्रेड स्टूडेंट आउट ऑफ ट्वेंटी फोर थाउजेंड स्टूडेंट्स एंड अदर इज कॉल्ड एज द एरिया रैंडम सैम्पलिंग और क्लस्टर रैंडम सैम्पलिंग वट इज दैट से रिसर्चर इज इंटरेस्टेड इन सैम्पलिंग द एटीट्यूड ऑफ ग्रेजुएट इंजीनियर सी एस सी स्टूडेंट इन स्टेट वेरी डिफिकल्ट एक्सपेंसिव बिकॉज सी एस सी ब्रांच इज बींग टॉट इन ऑल द इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेजेस ओके सो वट ही डज ही फर्स्ट स्क्योर ए मैप ऑफ द स्टेट which can be subdivided into city blocks then he selects the actual units within each block at random using systematic random sampling say in the in the state of punjab so you can divide that punjab into say there are say uh, 11 states jalandhar patiala ludhiana amritsar first of all list all these states then list all the engineering colleges so this is how you will select So it is similar to stratified random sampling, but the groups are selected for their geographical location. That is, colleges within a particular, uh, that is, uh, students within a particular college. The college is the cluster with the students being selected randomly from within the cluster. Now, the what are the steps? Firstly, define the population. You have already defined. what size you want number of students you want to select identify and define the clusters then make a list of clusters in the population estimate the average number of population members in each cluster and then determine the number of clusters needed by dividing the sample size by the estimated size of the cluster and then randomly select the needed number of sample cluster from the list you can use uh, a table of random numbers maybe you can use uh, systematic random sampling or you can you can use the simple random so include in the sample all population members in the selected cluster this is slightly uh, complex and it takes time and it is that is why it is uh, expensive another is quota random sampling quota sampling can be biased it can be unbiased also now here i am talking about unbiased random sampling first of all decide on the characteristics of the sample frame a sample is selected to meet these characteristics first identify the characteristics okay for example if the sample frame is car drivers and the car driving population is 55% male and 45% female then the quota would require the same proportions so participants would be then selected to fill this quota using the random method that is why first quota you have fixed then randomization and if you do not do randomization then it will fall under biased that is the non probability uh, uh, sample math now coming to non probability sampling firstly the purposive sampling a teacher you see selects a group of students by an arbitrary method on the basis of past performance in order to identify effectiveness of a new instructional method so i have divided the students into two groups on the basis of their uh, say previous class test or maybe on the basis of their uh, half yearly examination marks 
that is purposive sampling with purpose it is not random so purposely you have selected the sample so this involves selecting the nearest and most convenient people to participate in the research for example i want to study the effect of computer assisted instruction on achievement of students in digital electronics and uh, i know one of my friend friends is working in a particular college i know that i can be uh, conveniently collect the information i go to that particular college one group i will teach through ci other group i will teach through lecture method can i draw conclusion on the basis of this research that cai would prove to be an effective method as far as teaching digital electronics is concerned i cannot say confident because i have taken sample from one only one mem one college only so this involves selecting the nearest and the most convenient people to participate in the research okay that is not random so this method of selection is not representative and it is considered to be unsatisfactory way of carrying out research for example aapne ek hi college se do section le liye ek ko aapne usse padhaya dusre ko dusre se padhaya instead of doing that at least aap un college ke bacche agar maan lijiye 100 bacche hain to 100 ko randomly aap divide karte hain dono mein intact aapne to ek intact class le liya ki ek ko ci ho sakta hai wo class mein sare bacche hi intelligent ho kai bar kuch colleges mein sections are made on the basis of their marks ki ye better section hai ye usse kam better section hai to mai how can i draw conclusion on the basis of uh, this kind of sampling so this is i would say convenient sampling okay another is that quota sampling which is not random it is non probability equivalent of you can say stratified sampling so first identify different stratum age gender qualification etc and then also identify what proportion you want to take convenience or judgment sampling is then used to select the required number of subjects from each stratum another very important is snowball sampling you might have heard this concept it is used when research is focused on participants with very specific characteristics such as being the members of a gang having identified or contacted one gang member researcher uses to be put in a touch with any i would say friend who is also the gang member so a non probability method used when the desired sample characteristics are not uh, uh, you guys easily available or very rare very specific so extremely difficult to identify the respondents in these situations what do you do you rely on referrals you ask one friend can you uh, know some of the members of this kind of uh, characteristics okay whatever he or she tells you you will select that individual for participating in your research so relies on referrals from initial subjects to generate the additional subjects first you identify one then on the uh, from him you draw man, many more it lowers the research cost you can find out but it introduces bias searching is possible but it introduces biases because the technique itself reduces the likelihood that the sample will represent a good cross section from the population now so advantages disadvantages now comparison 
so simple random sampling meaning equal probability of each element of the population to be selected advantage is that require only a minimum knowledge of the population you don't need to know all the population it is free or uh, you can say free of errors in the classification and appropriate for analysis of data including use of inferential statistics yeah i think uh, you might be knowing about two types of statistics one is the descriptive statistics descriptive statistics is computed to describe the nature of distribution data distribution of data and for describing the nature of distribution data we compute measures of central tendency that is mean median mod measures of variability that is the standard deviation then uh, we also compute skewness kurtosis so on the basis of this we can say whether the data is normally distributed or not so depending upon the normality that is normal distribution of data or that is not normally distributed we use different inferential statistics the purpose is to draw the inferences we have analysis of variance we have uh, uh, t ratios z ratios or say chi square there are number of methods so that we will take up in the next week uh, when we study about descriptive and inferential statistics disadvantage is that larger errors for the same sample size than in stratified sampling lack of use of available population knowledge lack of knowledge concerning the size of the sample units so this is the this is the error stratified random sampling that is dividing a population into strata so advantage is efficient sampling sampling errors only within the strata selection within each stratum in different ways and proportion you can go for equal proportion you can go for um, proportional and lack lack of accurate information of proportion of population in each category and slightly faulty classification another is systematic sampling that is selecting every nth unit from the population work is saved variability is less it is more accurate and uh, uh, this is the increase size of error in the existence of periodicity in the ordering of population member increase possibility of researcher to maneuver some of the sample subjects likewise areas cluster sampling sampling cluster first carried out and then we select the elements within the cluster cost is less and possibility of decrease in the accuracy of predicting parameter purpose saving sampling that is arbitrary uh, selection of uh, a sample from a particular population so we use uh, best of we use uh, best available knowledge of the sample we draw the sample with purpose we are not random so we can control variables better and uh, checking data can be possible homogeneity of the sample subjects we know that uh, these have got this this kind of background so homogeneity uh, of sample can be best taken care of the disadvantage is that uh, we are not able to make generalizations because it is purposive and uh, it is questionable reliability is questionable and error there are errors in classifying the sample subjects now simple random sampling procedure in order to random a full list of everyone within a sample frame is required first of all you need the complete list of all the members in a defined target group then you can use a table of random numbers assign a number to each member of the population enter a table of random number at any point and move in any predetermined direction whether uh, horizontal whether vertical whether diagonally okay and read the number of the individuals to be included in the sample 
एंड गो ऑन सेलेक्टिंग टिल यू अटेन द रिक्वायर्ड सैंपल साइज तब तक इसको आप सेलेक्ट करते जाइए तो दिस इज रैंडम टेबल इट इज अवेलेबल इन द स्टैटिस्टिक्स बुक्स ओके यू कैन फाइंड आउट एग्जाम्पल सपोज दैट यू आर गोइंग टू सेलेक्ट थर्टी स्टूडेंट्स एट रैंडम फ्रॉम ए पॉपुलेशन ऑफ नाइन हंड्रेड स्टूडेंट्स Now select a sample using simple random probability technique. How you will go? First of all, each of the 900 students in the population would be given a code number from 001 to 0 uh, to 900. From the random table, suppose we pick column 10 to 14, row 15 to start sampling, and our decision is to move downward to the page. you can go upward you can go diagonally the first number selected is 844 okay the next number are 448 to 806 428 and so on and discard the numbers higher than 900 okay the sample is selected because you will go from 001 to 900 systematic random sampling procedure procedure involves selecting a sample by counting every nth member from the population until the desired sample size is obtained for example you want to select four students out of a population of 20 so 4 by 20 that is 5 so you can select every fifth students close your eyes first of all and stick a pin into the list to know where within the list to begin selecting students maybe uh, uh, closing your eyes you can uh, 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 stick a pin say at uh, number 7 so 7 you select this one then plus 5 12th then plus 5 17th okay and then move to uh, uh, initial order okay so in this way you will be able to select so steps to be followed are define the population first determine the desired sample size obtain a list of the population select every kth person that depends upon you okay select some random place at the top of the population list start at that point take every kth person name on the list until the desired sample size is reached you have to be careful that there is no systematic rhythm to the flow or the list of people and if the end of the list is reached before the desired sample is reached go back to the top of the list again stratified random sampling procedure divide the population into two or more sub population or strata ensure all strata are represented in the sample and the question is how to allocate one is the equal allocation that is select equal number of persons from each of these strata and then second one is the proportional allocation if the population size is very high so select strata members in the sample proportional to the number of members in the strata and population for example 1000 teachers with the be 800 teachers with me and 600 teachers with phd total 2400 teachers select 500 teachers from multiply by 500 okay so 1000 divided by 24 into 500 so that is from be population now how to proceed under area cluster sampling procedure so when list of individuals are not available or when characteristics of population not known a few colleges are selected randomly and a relatively large number of student is selected within each college describe how researcher would select 100 students from 5000 students by using above procedure if these 100 students are housed in 500 independent college buildings so average number of students who belong to each college is 10 so select 10 college buildings randomly this is how you will proceed this is cluster sampling so first to divide the population into different uh, cities or different districts etc purpose of sampling procedure 
sample is selected from the population by some arbitrary method then decide on the basis of available information thought to be representative of the total population or by intuition on the basis of criteria deemed to be self evident for example a teacher selects two different groups of students by ability on the basis of available intelligence quotient or past performance scores to identify the difference of instructional effectiveness between the group so we are becoming biased now before we determine the sample size we need to understand the concept of sampling error sampling error is the deviation from the true nature of the defined population due to some chance variation in drawing samples few cases from populations many possible cases that is we don't uh, employ uh, you can say we 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 are not careful while using the sampling technique then the sampling error arises so on computing sample mean first of all compute sample mean you will know how far can the sample mean differ from the population mean least amount of error will occur when the number of cases in sample is large and there is homogeneity in the sample you will have less sampling error if you have taken a large sample and uh, you have equated them on various variables the samples is homogeneous say all the members are male or all the members in the sample are female okay on certain characteristics you are equating them matching them there are tables recommending sample size but as a general rule the smaller the total sample frame the larger the sample ratio needs to be this is the rule now when sampling error needs to be considered when we wish to generalize from a sample to a population then we need to consider the sampling error for example a researcher draws a sample of consumer opinions about the quality of a new product from which he makes inferences about the population of all possible consumers because you cannot uh, uh, collect information from every consumer you go for sampling here if sampling error is sufficiently small we can reasonably conclude that any difference between sample mean and population mean is due to chance therefore sample is representative of the population and allow generalization to be made about that population so you have to make very uh, less uh, sampling errors that is why i said least amount of error will occur when the number of cases in sample is large and there is homogeneity in the sample okay you will get very least error okay then another is when we wish to determine whether two or more samples were drawn from the same or different population another example a researcher investigates the effect of a drug on the maze learning behavior of rats using two samples of rats an experimental group receiving the drug and the other group not receiving the drug that is the control group here we are asking whether two samples are sufficiently different to rule out chance and point to some determining agent or condition to attribute any difference to chance alone for example the study is to determine the effect of computer assisted instruction on achievement of students in digital electronics i have prepared one achievement test in digital electronics i have selected 10 topics of digital electronics one group is taught through uh, uh, ci package another group is taught through lecture method and i have divided the population into two groups using appropriate random sampling technique okay first of all i'll administer the achievement test to both the group 
before conduct of the experiment i will uh, score the answer sheets and find out the, their pre achievement score i will uh, compute uh, statistics the statistics is that t ratio and the t ratio says that there is no significant difference in the achievement pre achievement scores of both the groups that means both the groups in the in, uh, in the beginning were behaving equally there were no differences okay then i go for the post test scores only but if the two groups are significantly different that is in the beginning itself they are behaving differently then i need to go for gain score okay post test minus pre score so you have you are matching the students on the basis of their pre achievement score or on, on the basis of say uh, uh, their gender or on the basis of their intelligence you can also take up okay then another is considerations in determining the sample size one is accuracy precision and results will be more correct if you take large sample size there will be less chances of uh, any uh, you can say uh, any deviation second is homogeneity of the population when the population is homogeneous in the attributes under study a smaller sample is required than if the population is heterogeneous okay cost money time and effort required to obtain small data so it means your sample size depends upon uh, cost in simple random sampling as the homogeneity decreases size of sample will increase so if the population is homogeneous you can take a small sample if the population is not homogeneous you need to take larger sample in stratified random sampling researcher can afford to take fewer cases when each strata is homogeneous so you see the important consideration is homogeneous homogeneity okay and in cluster sampling the researcher selects a large number of cases because uh, uh, the population is huge you are you have divided the population into different uh, uh, areas on the basis of their geographical location so small sample less time less money it is very economic economical convenience appropriate for in depth case study large sample smaller sampling error reliability will be more kyunki so, agar ek ya do sample ne kuch galat bhi kar diya uska koi effect nahi hoga because sample size is very large and increase in the power of statistical test applied to the data क्योंकि तो आपके पास नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन आएगा जैसे मान लीजिए आपने 10 लोगों के ऊपर ही एक्सपेरिमेंट किया है उसका आप क्या निकालेंगे नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन पता ही नहीं चलेगा उसका सो चांस फैक्टर जो है वो अपना रोल निभाएगा सो नाउ स्टैटिस्टिक्स एंड सैंपल्स व्हेन प्रेजेंटिंग द रिसर्च द रिसर्चर नीड टू बी एबल टू डेमोन्स्ट्रेट how representative of the whole population the sample data he has collected is so there are two statistical test for this one is the standard error and second is the confidence intervals or confidence levels now what is uh, standard error first compute this standard deviation of the population and also take into consideration the sample size a statistical calculation can measure the degree of error likely to occur between the results of a sample and the results of a population called the standard error okay jitna bada sample hoga utna hi standard error sampling error jo hai wo kam hoga standard error jo kam hoga so when a probability sample of 100 plus is undertaken the distribution can usually be assumed to be normal okay when the sample has normal distribution we can use the z score 
to obtain confidence limits for the sample mean. It can be used by calculating, uh, uh, confidence levels can be uh, calculated by using the central limit theory uh, theorem. Using this theorem and the standard error, we can then use the area below the normal distribution curve to make predictions about our sample. For this, uh, we will take up in the, la uh, in, the, in the second week how this can be uh, determined. Okay. In addition, we can use the properties of the normal distribution curve to provide us with confidence level. And basically, we, are, we use uh, three confidence levels, 68%, 95%, and 99%. It does not mean that we are 95% sure that a single sample mean lies within these limits. It means that if we draw many samples and find the mean of each, then we can expect 95% of the sample means to be within the stated limit. Only 5% of chances we get the outside limit. Likewise, if we... Uh, 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 repeat experiment 100 times, 99% of the time we get the same result. It means we are 99% confident. And this is the 99% confidence level. That is only 1% of chance or time we get the uh, result outside the limit. So this is the, uh, the confidence levels and you can find the bell curve, etc. So uh, now, friends, you know why we go for sampling uh, instead of taking the large population, because uh, it's not feasible to collect information from each and every member of the population. We uh, employ a sampling technique to draw a sample which represents the population. So there are basically two types of sampling techniques, probability sampling technique and non-probability sampling technique. Probability sampling techniques would provide you the authentic results. And uh, under this uh, sampling technique, we include simple random sampling, systematic sample ran random uh, sampling, then stratified random sampling, cluster or area sample random, OK? And under non-probability, we go for purposive sampling or convenience sampling or snowball sampling. And these have got uh, many disadvantages. But depending upon the purpose of uh, your study or nature of your objectives, you go for different sampling techniques. And I would suggest, please, please be take large sample size so that you are able to um, uh, get better results and you can uh, apply the findings of your study to larger population. Now, if you have any uh, questions or queries, you are welcome.